Growing basil with, co with tomatoes improves the tomato's flavor. And along with garlic, repels aphids. However, basil does not get along with sage. And garlic does not get along with peas or beans. Because of limited space in all my growing areas, before I plant anything new, I Google the term, quote, companion planting, and then write the name of the herb, end quote. And companion planting is a really a broad uh, area. Right now I'm just focusing on pest control. Before moving on, this is pennyroyal, genus mentha, like spearmint and peppermint. Repels mosquitoes, fleas, gnats, and other flying biting insects that I don't know about. Now my previous plant died in, the, in frost a couple winters ago. And after unsuccessful attempts to find it at a store or grow it from seed, I found a live plant online about this big, nurtured it enough in a pot like this to split into a second pot. Once these two get big enough, I'm putting one of the halves over here, where I usually had a citronella plant, which is an annual. This year I just felt it was redundant. Now, while relatively safe, it's not a food crop. In fact, you should keep it away from any breeding livestock. And everything I'm about to show you from here on out is a food crop. Sage. Bought once, planted once, gets watered with the rest of the garden. Repels black flea beetles. As well as carrot flies, but I can't put it near the carrots because it'd be too close to the basil and they don't get along. Parsley. Bought once, planted once, watered with the rest of the garden. Used on butter potatoes. Part of my uh, bouquet garni for the chicken broth. Also repels beetles. This is thyme. Bought once ten years ago. Planted once. Watered with the rest of the garden. Used as a seasoning for chicken and shrimp. It also repels <clears throat> tomato tomato hornworms and today it's also going to start well in the future protecting the corn against earworms after I transplant part of a part of it because it will likely grow and spread like the other one it came from I'm putting it in a girdle. This is basically a coffee can, bottom cut out, then painted to protect it from rust, usually in a camouflage color. Uh, fill in some more. <clears throat> Leave about a two inch, well, one to two inches above the surface. Dirt. Good dirt. 
tremendo. Going around it. Before I water it, giving it some dandelion soup. Rosemary. Four of them. A more useful hedge than boxwood. Bought these once, planted them once. And they just get watered as much as they need it. Goes in bread, on chicken, part of the bouquet garni, and their branches make good skewers for grilling. While their trimmings, when I you know prune it well, well prune it like it should be go around to the mulch on all the other beds because it repels cabbage moths, bean beetles, and caraflies. Oregano. Bought once. Planted once until this year. Used in marinara sauce. Spaghetti carbonara. Repels cabbage butterflies and cucumber beetles that's for that reason this year I've transplanted some of it over to where my cucumbers are I do not throw rocks at birds peppermint bought once planted in a girdle be thinned out it's water with the rest of the garden. It uh, goes into tea, freshens breath. And it repels aphids, cabbage fly, cabbage looper, and flea beetles. Spearmint just kind of fell off here. And any, everywhere else in the garden, it just shows up. It just gets water wherever it can find it. Used in tea. And can be used in mint juleps and mojitos. But it also repels aphids. Earwigs, mealybugs. Slugs, snails, and spider mites. Nasturtiums are edible, or one of the plants that attract ladybugs. They repel the bean beetle, as well as squash bug and potato bug. In addition to aphids, garlic also repels. Tree borers, cabbage looper, codling moths, Japanese beetles, snails, carrot root flies, and cabbage maggots. In the 10 years since I bought this rose, uh, rose bush, I haven't had a problem with aphids. Keep it that way. All the garlic. Peel close. Keeping the paper on. These need to be four inches apart, at least. I'm going to go ahead and make it six. 
see, two inches deep. Then I'll do more on the other side of it. That seems like overkill, but I get more garlic out of it. 